Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, as discussed earlier, that is during the discussion of hydride and the types of hydrides, we have discussed that hydrides have basically three types. One is ionic, covalent and metallic. So now in this topic basically I am going to talk about what are ionic hydrides and how they have been prepared. So let us talk about that. So talking about the ionic hydrides, so ionic hydrides uh, have in another name also and that is basically saline hydride. The name have came because of that uh, these hydrides are like salt like nature, they have salt like nature for example NaCl, NaCl is a salt and it is very much soluble in water. So even though here also uh, they have a same kind of nature and that's the reason the saline hydride is being named and there are different criteria that I am going to talk about. So let me discuss that the uh, these hydrides are very much uh, soluble in uh, water but uh, before that let me discuss that uh, uh, how uh, the ionic hydrates are been formed so basically when it comes to hydrate uh, and especially about the ionic hydrate they are combining this that is the hydrogen is combining with that of the s block element and those elements whenever they combine with hydrogen they form the respective hydrate basically known as ionic hydrate so for example if i'm talking about that is sodium so sodium when it combines with the hydrogen but the thing is we have to give a certain kind of condition so that we could prepare this kind of hydride and that's uh, that at high temperature and there are also certain conditions for which we could prepare the hydride so in this case basically the product that we could obtain by using of two moles of na along with that of h2 we could get that is uh, two moles of nah over here so here basically sodium is the one which is basically an uh, s block uh, element And this uh, hydrate that has been formed that is basically ionic in nature. So in spite of uh, having an ionic nature there are also certain uh, properties of this kind of hydrates and those are basically uh, whenever it is in a solid form this is very crystalline structure. So they have a very crystalline structure they are basically uh, whenever they are in a solid form so they are not conducting electricity so therefore they are acting like a non-conductors when they are in a solid form and uh, that's the reason that since they are solid they are also not volatile and they are basically uh, stable. Uh, in the solid state but if you talk about the melted part of this uh, sodium hydride or uh, any hydride which is basically ionic so the uh, melted hydride are the one that could conduct electricity and that is what uh, I want to discuss about here also that how they conduct electricity and what are the different properties that could be exhibited by the melted hydride so as I've said that uh, the hydrides are uh, basically ionic hydrides they conduct electricity when they are in a melted form so that's the reason that they have different kind of property that I want to talk about so suppose if the hydride whenever it has been melted form and it has been electrolyzed so what will happen especially I have told you that is uh, the uh, s block elements they are basically electropositive so that's the reason that the hydrogen will have an uh, charge on it as minus one so that's the reason that I want to talk about here that how can we prove that uh, hydrides are the one uh, that consists of negative charge as well as how we could predict that uh, the uh, hydrogen uh especially in uh, that is dihydrate is negatively charged the hydrate undergoes that is electrolyzed uh, process uh, and uh, that is what um, there are two um, electrodes that we know that is one is uh, uh, anode and one is cathode and in anode basically uh, the thing is uh, the uh, oxidation occurs so in this uh, case basically if I if I talk about the hydrate suppose if hydrate is a negatively charged species or the hydrogen uh, is a negatively charged species and that is in melted form so that will move towards the anode which is basically positively charged so that's the reason that uh, suppose if uh, the hydride is negatively charged so that's the reason that uh, it is depositing on uh, the anode and uh, the anode is the one where basically the oxidation reaction happens so that's the reason that uh, hydrogen will liberate that is one electron along with uh, the formation of that is hydrogen over here that is this H minus will be converted into H along with that of E minus but as we know that hydrogen doesn't exist in the form of an atomic state so that's the reason that two moles of H minus uh, they will combine at anode so that uh, two moles of electron will be liberated along with that of H2. So in this case basically we could see that uh, at anode uh, basically H2 is being liberated. So this indicates that uh, the hydrogen is the one that has a negative charge and by liberation of uh, H2 on the uh, anode side we could clearly say that uh, the hydrogen consists of minus one charge. So this was a certain uh, thing that I was talking about uh, the hydrate and uh, let me talk about the different kind of uh, properties also. So those properties are as follows.
As I said earlier, that is uh, the ionic uh, hydrides are basically soluble in water, but uh, this solubility is a very vigorous reaction. So whenever we take that is suppose if I'm considering that is uh, KH that is potassium hydride, and whenever it undergoes that is hydrolysis process. So in this case, basically uh, it produces a vigorous reaction, and the product that we could get is basically KOH along with that of the hydrogen. But this reaction is very vigorous and that's the reason that a tremendous amount of energy has also been released during this reaction and this is the property of the hydride that they are very much soluble in water so as to produce a base so in this case basically koh is the base that we know so similarly we can uh, react that is a uh, sodium hydride and we can uh, react it with water so as to produce that is naoh so thereby we could also prepare base along with the evolution of hydrogen gas so this was related to the reactivity but uh, let me talk about the certain hydrates which are belonging to s block and uh, those are basically if i talk about that is uh, lithium hydride so this is something that we have uh, did in the chapter that is s log and we have got to know that lithium hydrates are basically covalent in nature while we are talking about uh, the ionic hydrates so lithium hydride or whenever we talk about that is uh, uh, beryllium hydride so this hydrates are basically covalent in nature So that is how they are uh, exhibiting an exception case in the uh, S block while ever uh, they will form uh, that is hydride. So this were certain things that I was talking about. I talking about uh, the uh, stability. So the stability uh, it, it is we know that suppose if I am talking about that is LiH and uh, suppose if I am talking about BeH2. So in this case basically lithium is the one which is the first element of the group one and uh, talking about uh, the beryllium. So even uh, uh, beryllium is the one that is the first element uh, of the group two. So in this case we could say that the stability uh, that is uh, of the hydrate it, it actually decreases down the group that is in group one also and group two also. So uh, that is what I want to talk about and uh, let me talk about the reactivity of this uh, exception case that is for lithium hydride and beryllium hydride. So lithium hydride uh, is not very much reactive with that of uh, the chlorine molecule that is Cl2. So whenever uh, the lithium uh, hydride is treated with chlorine or oxygen so they are not much uh, reactive at moderate temperature with chlorine and uh, with oxygen. So that is how uh, that uh, they have a very exception case in all among all of the S block element which are forming hydride and uh, so this is what I want to talk about and let me discuss about the next one also that is uh, it is been found that uh, uh, the hydride that is especially about uh, that is lithium aluminum hydride that is LiAlH4 so that aluminum uh, that is lithium aluminum hydride are also used as catalyst in few of the reactions so this are certain properties of the ionic hydride that I was talking about thank you friends for watching this video I hope you have understood that is what is ionic hydride and uh, how uh, and what are the different properties of the ionic hydrates so I hope you have liked this video so thank you friends for watching this video I hope you will share this video with your friends and yes don't forget to subscribe you can Thank you so much.